encourages us on our families. Dr. Rakwena, if you may unmute and take the platform. Amen. Amen. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Good morning, brothers and sisters, this morning. Uh, we want to thank you for your prayers and uh, also for the quotation for the music, Brother Tsiri, that was very relevant to, to us this morning, that we want to be more like Jesus. I'm reading a familiar text with you this morning from the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is the very first chapter from verse 26. The Bible says, then God said, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. God created man in his image, in his likeness. Uh, the book Education, page 15 says, when Adam and Eve came from the greatest hand, they bore in their physical, mental, and spiritual nature a likeness to their maker. God created uh, uh, ma uh, uh, male and female in his own image. And it was his purpose that the longer that they lived, the more fully they will reveal this image, this likeness to God. And the more fully they will reflect the glory of their own creator and maker. All these faculties were capable of development. Their capacity and vigor were continually to increase. When you look at uh, your phone and uh, the profile pictures of your friends and family members. You see so many interesting and so many beautiful pictures. And some of our, in our homes and our houses, we have hanged or placed our pictures in nice frames and decorated them. As it were, God on his best day said, let us create and make a picture of ourselves, a likeness of ourselves. God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, the triune God. So they made a picture and they hanged it on the walls of Eden, so, as, so to speak. And this picture that they made, it was human beings, female and males, and uh, this picture could talk back to God, to its own God, the creator. The picture that God made out of himself that reflected his uh, likeness, could talk, could walk, could do all this. And this picture was capable of development. All other things that God created were different from this picture. This was the very picture of God that when human beings pass by, as we look at each other, we look at the touch and the handiwork of God. He, put more value, he puts more value on this picture of his, framed it, beautified it, glorified it, made it more honorable than any other creature, any other creation in the entire creation that he made on planet Earth and made it honorable, gave it a touch so that as we see each other or we see human beings pass, fellow human beings as they pass, you see the touch and the handiwork of God. And the family is where this picture should be honored, it should be more encouraged to grow and reflect more of its own creator. I want us to focus on the value that God puts on us to such an extent that even when we sinned, God looked after us and died for us. 
the price that he paid is himself to redeem us. The label, the price tag that God attaches to us as human beings, males and females, is of a high price. To such that when his image was dusted, was put to the dust by the devil, when it was marred, God came down to lift up his picture and dust, his, dust it off of sin and degradation and say, this is my picture. This is my own. And I want it to develop. I want to be glorified. I want it to be beautified. The, I know that there are some, some circumstances and things or people that can put one another down or whatever. But the most tragic thing is when we lower our own dignity. When we put ourselves down by the way we speak, oh, I'm just flesh and blood, oh, I'm just nothing, oh, I am this, I am that. And we are lowering the image of God in ourselves down and putting ourselves to the dust. The more we begin to realize that we are somebody to somebody, our lives will be lived in reflection of this person whom we regard as somebody and we are his. And that changes our mindset. That changes our thinking about ourselves and what we say in our silent talk to ourselves. How we conduct our lives in on earth and how we talk to others and relate, relate to others, it will be out of the dignity and the label and the price tag that we have attached to ourselves. Just like our special clothes that we wear, you put them somewhere. And after the dry clean, you put them in that wardrobe and put them for special occasion. Those clothes, you don't use them in the cattle post. You don't use them at the lens. You don't use them when you are cleaning the house because they're special, they're unique among other clothes. You put them aside. Maybe they are, they are designed for church or certain occasions or work at a certain particular time. Those clothes are special. But Jesus says we are special, we are honorable, we are his image, we are dignified, we are glorified, and we are meant to develop and reflect more of his character as the days go by of our living. When we put that, we begin to honor what God has honored in us and value ourselves. And what we say and what we do and how we interact, we value ourselves and we'll treat each other with the dignity that comes from God, that is born within, that comes out to other people as we relate as family members to each other. And that picture and that image of God will continue to shine because we are created in the image of God. Last week we were, this time we were talking about living in the presence of God. Even if we can go, from uh, far or near, wherever, even if we can leave our family members behind, we live in the presence of God, but we live with the dignity and with the glory that God has imparted to us. And we want to preserve that in our minds. We want to preserve that in our relationships. And as we raise children, as we interact as husbands and wives, as single parents, as, uh, as uh, single youths, we'll remember that we are the image of God and God has framed us and God has glorified us and God has left us to grow in that glory, in that image. And he has redeemed us and washed by his, uh, by his blood so that we become complete image of his. And we are going to honor ourselves and treat ourselves with the dignity and accept ourselves as God has accepted us and place ourselves as God has placed us as his image, his picture. And we will not let our minds, let circumstances reduce us to nothing. We'll rise above circumstances and we'll honor our lives and honor our fellow human beings, honor our children, honor our family members, even those who we are praying for that are far from the kingdom of God. We'll say, God, 
You store that image. May they realize that they are yours by creation and by redemption. They are yours. And that image should be perfected. That image should be restored, even as we raise our children in the image and likeness of God. May we continue to reflect that image and put it in our minds today that we are the image of God. As you walk and you look at your shadow, you know that the shadow of a man of God, a shadow of a woman of God is passing by. When you look at yourself in the mirror going to work, you are looking at the image of God and say, God, may I keep this image intact, faithful, and honorable before you so that the words what I say about myself, what I say to me, that do not demean, depreciate, self-depreciation, doesn't demean and depreciate self. It uplifts me so that the mind tells the body to live a life of dignity because we come from the hands of God. God touched humanity, molded humanity, and gave it gave humanity a touch that he didn't give to any other creation, made us in his image. We are the image of God. We are somebody to somebody. We are special and unique. We are not even individually made out of leftovers of flesh and bones of somebody else. God did not make you as an individual person. From the leftovers, of uh, flesh and blood and bones of somebody else and says, here are leftovers, here are pieces of bones, what can I do? And then he just makes you, mm, there you are. You are somebody in God, you are special. He created you, he gave you a touch, uniqueness, and he shed his blood on Calvary, just especially for you and you are unique and special. Let us hold ourselves with that. Let us let our minds dwell on that, that I am somebody to God. I'm somebody to God, the picture of God, a profile picture of God, wherever I go today, the profile picture. And the guardian angels will be watching over us personally, individually, wherever we are, because we are God's image, God's picture, God's profile picture on earth that when people see us, they see the picture of God. Let us impart this spirit to our children so that they live with the dignity of heaven. They live with a value that does somebody in Christ. May God bless us. May God bless the reading of his word and keep us today as the profile picture of God on earth that he gave us a touch at the creation, gave us a touch at, at, at Calvary when he shed his blood to wash our sins and to put us dignified, special for, for God. We are dignified and special for God. Let us this mindset be in our minds. Thank you for, for listening and may God bless us for the day. In Jesus name, amen. And amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Raquena. Won't you pray for us just to close this segment? Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you for your word that we have, we can't self depreciate ourselves when you have given us a touch at our creation individually, as a people, as families, and put us aside to be your profile picture here on earth. So that as we walk about, people will see that this is the image of God. As we develop all our faculties and our capabilities and our opportunities, as we develop our children, as we relate as family members, as we relate as brothers and sisters and take each other seriously as somebody's property, somebody's image, just as we take our images seriously. We pray, Lord, that may you bless each and every one of us and bless our families that we represent, that at last, Lord, will be ushered in your kingdom to live with you forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.